you met the new God of War Knocking out everyone, it's quite bizarre When I compete, I raise the bar But that's your energies and I leave you scarred Because I have infinite force I'll eat you up, you're the main course And after I'm done, I show no remorse Secret Spring is my only true source Huh, the power that I bring No doubting I will win Nah, devour, it's my tank Any opponent that enters the TCG ring Starting as a weak roll I evolve and start the asshole Picking them prizes one by one Be careful with your moves or you might be done Hide my use Glade Fighting type, that's so great One DCE and then it's fade I'll smack you in the discard with your face Did I forget to mention that this deck has energy acceleration We power up without hesitation Yeah, we will get out of any situation Boom! Yeah, God of War GX shows its face And it's good! Follow me guys, episode 128 What's up YouTube, it's Sabdo's TCG here and welcome to episode 128 Holy moly, I've been doing this for a long time So hopefully you guys are still enjoying the content, the rap and the information here Definitely show your support by destroying the like button if you do uh, well, Today we're gonna look at Guard of War GX from the new Burning Shadow set and some suitable partners for it as well as some sweet combos so uh, you'll have an idea to make a deck with it but first be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more great Pokemon TCG content like this because they come on the channel on every Wednesday so you'll definitely get yourself at home at my channel uh, alright first up we're gonna look at the main card of the episode this time around Gardevoir GX uh, again got a lot of love from Pokemon Gardevoir is a Pokemon that tends to get a lot of love from Pokemon and this card is no different and why is that? Well, you'll so see that soon enough in this video, so sit back and relax. It's a stage 2 fairy type Pokemon with only 230 HP, which is rather on the low side and is actually the lowest I've seen so far for a stage 2 GX as of yet. So I'm not a huge fan of the HP, but I'm a huge fan of the attacks. I'll uh, cover the attacks in a minute, but first let us check out the weakness. The weakness to metal can be quite troublesome because there are still some rogue Excadrill Drax running around and Metagross GX is definitely racking up a lot of tournaments here and there. So Galeo GX also hits for weakness but yeah that guy one shots about everything in the format so that weakness can be uh, disregarded with that one and uh, yeah it also has resistance this is the thing I love most it has a resistance to darkness that is awesome because darkness Pokemon will see a lot more play with dark ride GX being introduced in burning shadows as well coming in stores on the 4th of August so definitely get yourself some boosters because there's a lot of great cards to look forward to uh, yeah just like this guard of war GX uh, having a buffer to uh, the um, uh, darkness type is always great because yeah, that will be played a lot with Dark Ride GX as mentioned. The retreat cost of 2 is standard, but it's not a huge issue here since we can attach 2 energies per turn, 1 uh, manual attachment and then we have an awesome ability that lets us attach 1 extra energy. The ability Secret Spring states once during your turn, before you attack of course, otherwise you already end your turn, <laughs> uh, you may attach a fairy energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. That does not have to be a fairy type or anything for that matter, you can just attach, uh, attach a fairy energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Pretty simple and that ladies and gentlemen is a powerful ability. It also stacks which means if you have two Gardevoir GX's out you can attach two additional fairy energies uh, during your turn and that pairs so well with its first attack Infinite Force. If you haven't heard about it in the rap uh, intro Infinite Force uh, packs a, uh, just a great punch like that. Infinite Force is awesome. It deals 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon and that is just so powerful. I remember the days where Mewtwo EX and Next Destinies got released and everybody was hyping wow that attack is insane well it's just like that but with a 10 extra base damage let's say Tapu Lele deals 20 damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon well Gardevoir does 30 for each uh, energy attached to both active Pokemon and uh, well, you could say like ah Tapu Lele is just so average well this is not average at all ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna explain it right now to put it in perspective let's say we are facing a Tapu Bulu GX with three energies attached wow pretty scary right well, if our Gardevoir uh, has uh, three energies attached, we one-shot it. And uh, we can attach a DCE that works uh, uh, as well with the attack. So let's say our Gardevoir has a Fairy Energy and a DCE. Well, then we one-shot Tapu Bulu GX in one shot. Bang, it's out of there. And this is just without using the Choice Band or the Kukui. So we can add the damage up if we even want to. But the numbers are just getting crazy with Gardevoir GX. So uh, as you can see, this is definitely some potential here that we're looking at. But it doesn't stop there. It also has 
as Twilight GX. And I'm not talking about vampires, werewolves or any movie shenanigans. Uh, we are talking about the attack. It states that we can shuffle 10 cards from our discard pile into our deck. And that attack is just so powerful in the late game uh, to get back your resources. Definitely uh, when you think about that VS Seeker is most likely to be rotated out of the standard format starting in September. This attack will get yourself all the crucial supporters or uh, cards that you discarded early game back into your deck. That can be items, that can be uh, special energies, uh, ener basic energies, Pokemon lines, everything you want back in the deck. But the best thing about this attack is that we are Garbodor proof. Let's just say we're facing that trash launching monster and we have a couple of Guard of War GXs on the field. Well, then we just use one of them, use that Twilight GX and uh, get all the items that we use so far to get everything out on the board back into our deck. Let's say all the rare candies, all the Ultra Balls, Level Balls, everything for that matter gets back in the deck and suddenly out of nowhere Garbodor's uh, Trash Lunch output is zero damage. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. I just adore the attack. Uh, that way, getting back so much resources. It also works out against milling decks. Thinking about the uh, Sylveon GX with the uh, yeah Team Rocket's handiwork, or Handum EX, or uh, Bubble B, or uh, yeah, let's say the new Charizard GX, which is also in the set, by the way, has an attack, a GX move that can actually uh, uh, discard ten cards from the top of your deck. That can be uh, such a pain and you know what, <laughs> but we can get back everything so it kind of works in the opposite direction. We can get everything back from the discard so uh, we're Charizard proof as well, hooray! Okay, now that I reviewed the Gardevoir GX card in all its glory, we have to talk about some facts here. Gardevoir GX is a stage 2 Pokemon, it's not like the EXs that we can just slap it on the field, no it's a stage 2, which means we have to evolve from our little weak Rolls. And uh, you know Rolls, it doesn't have a lot of HP, so uh, yeah, Espeon EX might see a lot of play in the near future to get downgrade us, but we definitely need to rely on the rare candy to evolve our uh, little Rolls all the way into Gardevoir GX. That's, that way I also recommend running Bridget as the main supporter, uh, running one or two copies. Uh, one is just efficient but it could be priced. We can get it out with Tapu Lele, use Bridget, get a couple of an army of rolls on the bench and start from there. Also Alolan Vulpix can work out really well in this deck just because you can easily get Vulpix out of the active position once you got out everything you want. Vulpix, uh, although Alolan Vulpix that is, uh, it has the attack beacon that lets you search your deck for two Pokemon and put them in the hand. That way we can evolve turn by turn and just even evolve into little Curlios and then uh, without using rare candy because you know Espeon uh, EX will definitely devolve, uh, devolve us in the future and uh, we have to be uh, careful of that. But even better than Alolan Vulpix is the new Diancie, which has a first attack that states search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon. This counts as evolving that Pokemon. So in theory, I do think this will work. If we start second, we could use a supporter named Wally and uh, then use the attack to get ourselves Gardevoir GX out on turn one. I have to check out some rulings for this, but I do think this will work. And uh, yeah, just thinking about a Gardevoir GX on your, uh, if you start second, of course, on your first turn, is awesome. The support that Diancy brings uh, is just huge. I'm talking about one-off supporters a lot like Wally, Bridget, uh, so definitely get yourself some Tapu Lele's in the deck slapped in uh, because it does work really well. Uh, Tapu Lele Jax is just a lesser version of Infinite Force and it gets out the uh, supporter of choice with Wonder Tag. It also has Energy Drive so it can pack a punch and we do run DCE so Tapu Lele definitely run two or maybe even three copies in the deck just to get the consistency going as strong as possible. Be sure to also run four Ultra Balls because uh, yeah we definitely need to get our Tapu Lele out and with Ultra Ball we can just grab it from the deck, discard some cards but we can get them back with the Twilight GX in uh, yeah, close situations. So Gardevoir GX already has a main partner that is Tapu Lele GX together with some uh, evolution cards I talked about. Another great card I'd like to mention here is Galate from Breakthrough. This already saw some play with Octillery in its own little rogue deck, but as you know, Galate evolves from Kerlia, so we could even play like three Gardevoir GXs and one Galate. Since Galate also runs on DCE and it deals 60 damage plus 70 more if we use the supporter uh, uh, this turn, which in theory will always happen because uh, we do run Tapu Lele. So let's just say we deal 130 damage for a single DCE on a fighting type Pokemon. Yeah, 
I cannot tell you guys how good this is. As a bonus, it also has an ability, I'll talk about that later, but the fighting type is just so powerful. It only gives up one prize card, and we can one-shot main threats like Drompa GX, Taurus GX, or maybe even darkness types like Zoroark, Darkrai GX, or new, the new Zoroark GX, which will come out uh, in the future. So yeah, having that uh, yeah, option to run a fighting type that evolve, uh, evolve your, your Curlia is just great. Its ability, Premonition, lets you look at the top five cards of your deck and then put them back on top uh, of your deck in any order. This also helps out a ton with the necessary cards. I have a few combos in mind. We have Shaman EX uh, or the supporter Mallow. Just know that Shaman EX is most likely to get rotated out of the standard format. So yeah, you could also run a 2-2 line of Artillery or maybe even an Oranguru. It works with the same combination, drawing cards from the top of your deck. So uh, yeah, the supporter Mallow could also work out. Tapulele, Mallow, get the cards you want, rare candy together with whatever you you like so definitely consider mellow here another nice little fun tech card is oracorio the one with supernatural dance yeah uh, this one uh, deals 10 damage actually one, drops one damage counter for each pokemon the opponent has in the discard in the late game this can be your main sweeper in addition of the uh, other win against vespaquin it provides uh, it also gets you some cheap uh, knockouts when the opponent retreated their damage pokemon and they're uh, yeah just a few hp uh, yeah less to be uh, knocked out by one of your pokemon so uh, let's say we use Oracorio, drop the last damage counters and boom, out of nowhere, we get some prize cards. And that for a single uh, yeah, Pokemon that uh, gives up a single prize and uses a colorless energy. We can use uh, the ability, uh, the spring and then boom, get an energy onto Oracorio and start from there. Definitely include it if you uh, have the room for it. As you know, uh, for the energies, I would recommend running four DCEs since that will provide the most damage output with infinite force. Of course you need fairy energies as well since the attack uh, requires a fairy energy so definitely run at least six of them to draw into them consistently and uh, we do need them for the attack cost as mentioned so don't forget that if you're still having consistency problems run maybe an extra energy or uh, two extra energies so i wouldn't go overboard and running nine uh, fairy energies but between six or eight could wor just work out really well and if you're still having problems maybe an oracorio with ability to get our basic energies could work or professor's letter but be careful it's an item but then again and we can get everything back from the discard so Garbler shouldn't uh, face us anymore <laughs> also uh, we have an energy called wonder energy which blocks all shenanigans from attacks except for the pure damage done to the fairy pokemon that this is attached to great to dodge the weird junk uh, that Alolan Muck might throw at you <laughs> that's also a GX from the set but remember wonder energy cannot be attached uh, through the secret spring ability of guard of war GX and it also can get uh, yeah, easily removed by enhanced hammer so be careful of that Comfy also is a neat option to prevent special conditions, but you have to find bench space and since we're only allowed to have 5 bench uh, spaces, unless we're running Skyfield, but I wouldn't run Skyfield in this deck, that uh, limits us, us to the uh, possible tech cards, just uh, to get it out there. Now that we talked about some tech cards and some fun uh, yeah, little uh, tweaks here and there, now let's talk about some supporters. Lysander could be the main card to target everything with infinite force, uh, but that will be rotated out soon, so maybe even better is the Guzma. Guzma is great, it's just like Lysander bought with a build and switch, we have to switch out. The bad thing is, yeah, with Lysander uh, getting rotated, it forces us to switch our active, and uh, this could uh, cause us an uh, awkward situation here and there, but that's where Fairy Garden comes in like a boss, and uh, with that we have free retreat on everything that has a fairy energy, so uh, with the ability of Gardevoir, it's definitely possible to get an energy on uh, almost anything on your field and have free retreat with everything. In the late game, I would use cards like an uh, yeah, energy retrieval or fisherman to get back your precious fairy energies, because you wouldn't be running a lot of them that way we can get them back and attach them straight from the bat with the abilities of course four sycamores are a must in this deck just think about it we can play as aggressively as we want thanks to the wonderful gx move uh, at our disposal so uh, why not run it it also is the fastest way to get out everything that we want if we discard something crucial like a pokemon card we can use rescue stretcher to get it back yeah Two or three ends are also great in this deck, definitely for consistency and the late game is great to end our opponent and uh, the early game we get a fresh hand of six, you know the drill, and is great. One Skyla is definitely an awesome card to put in a deck like this because with that we can get uh, the necessary Ultra Ball or Rare Candy to get ourselves the Gardevoir on the turn that we want. Uh, one copy of Bridget, as mentioned, is a must, definitely to set up all your rolls on the bench on turn one. 
For VS Seekers, as always, it's always nice to reuse your supporters while uh, they're in the discard. That gives you a whole lot of options in the late game. So for VS Seekers, if that gets uh, uh, yeah, excluded, definitely run more supporters, uh, the heavier supporter lines. Another fun little card is Fairy Drop, which lets you heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon uh, with a Fairy Energy attached. In combination with Twilight Jacks, we could reuse uh, actually all the Fairy Drops that we use. Let's say we uh, use three Fairy Drops already, then uh, we use that GX move, we get the uh, Fairy Drops back in the deck, and we can go in circles, so uh, that is great. Of course, Rare Candy is an item, uh, definitely run three or four copies of that, because it's the, the fastest way to get our Gardevoir on the field. Choice Band is a neat little option here, but yeah, you only need one or two copies. I wouldn't go overboard with this uh, Choice Band because as mentioned, the numbers are there. We definitely already uh, one-shot the opposing Pokemon. Unless we're facing uh, stage one or stage two, uh, that, that way we definitely need a Choice Band to get that number. Field Blower, of course, to get rid of the Flow Stones on threats like Garbodor with Garbotoxin or uh, yes, to get rid of all the Choice Bands on the opponent's side of the field. As mentioned, Rescue Stretcher is great. Regaining your Pokemon from the discard has never, ha has never been so easy. You can get one out of the discard straightly into your hand or shuffle three of them in your deck. Uh, yeah, let's just say we discard a lot of things with Ultra Ball and Sycamore, then Rescue Stretcher is our main card to get back our evolution lines. But if you're more fan to get back your energies, then Super Rod can uh, work just as efficiently, but yeah, it's a uh, personal preference, really. Then lastly, for the item card, Level Ball is something I uh, mentioned briefly. This is just uh, great to get your uh, Pokemon out with 90 HP or less. Great to get out your Rolls or Curlios or just getting one or two of them out on the field if we don't draw into the draw support. Let's say we really want to have some multiple Rolls out and uh, Bridget is priced, Level Ball can also get yourself some yeah, great uh, options right there. As the main stadium, I would run Fairy Garden or a Silent Lab or a mix uh, of those because Far Fairy Garden gives us so many possibilities to have free retreat with all our Pokemon and just circle around Gardevoir GXs all day long. Or maybe, uh, yeah, if we are damaged with a Gardevoir, we use Acerola, get all the energies back, attach them back with the ability. So it's great like that. Acerola also a, a card that may be a one-off in the deck. And then Silent Lab uh, is an other stadium card that could work really well to slow down your opponent because without using the uh, abilities of Tapu Lele, Shaman EX and everything like that, you have the time you have, uh, yeah, the time of the, your life with a little Vulpix in the active position and getting out everything uh, step step by step without your opponent interfering. Oh uh, yeah, also the uh, Silent Lab shuts down main decks like Darkrai GX or Volcanion. Without those abilities, those decks are useless and cannot function as well. So Silent Lab, really great, but gets rotated out soon. And that's about it for all the cards I'd like to talk about today. Uh, if you are running Gardevoir GX uh, to build a deck with, definitely let me know uh, what uh, you're gonna run. You can also run uh, Gardevoir as a support Pokemon to build up your Xerneas Break or anything, or maybe Mega Gardevoirs, if you find the room for it. But I would use Gardevoir GX as the main attacker of the deck. It's an efficient attacker, it attacks for one energy and uh, can uh, build from there. So definitely look forward to this card in the future, as it will definitely be used a lot. So the main strategy, uh, just to uh, just uh, have a little summary here, is piling up a bunch of energies on your Gardevoir GX and then obliterating everyone. Seems simple enough. So hopefully you enjoyed this car slash deck analysis. Let me know what you will be playing with Gardevoir GX and what strategies you might come up with in the comment section below. And now let's go on to Poké News. Yeah, and Poké News. This week I have uh, yeah four things on my list. First things first, the new uh, knockout collections are uh, yeah getting released soon with uh, legendary blisters in store. Uh, we have these blisters and they come with uh, yeah some packs here and there. We have uh, uh, XY base ad breakpoint. We have furious fist ancient origin. So a little mixture between those and uh, they come with a neat collection coin. So why not pick up one of these if you're just getting into the game? You'll you'll definitely get some knowledge here and there. Next up. The November set, yeah, well, I uh, talked about Burning Shadows a lot with his uh, upcoming release of Gardevoir GX and a lot of the other GXs, but in November, ladies and gentlemen, we will get Crimson Invasion. This is an Ultra Beast set, which will feature over 110 cards, uh, not including the uh, Secret Rares, of course, and the Extras. Uh, we have 8 new GX Pokémon and 9 new Trainer cards and 1 Special Energies. The Ultra Beasts are making their debut in this set, and uh, we have things like Guzzlord GX, and Nihilio, or actually, how is it pronounced? Nihil Lego. Whoa, I can't even pronounce this guy. All the Ultra Beasts, uh, most of them will get released in this set, so definitely get hyped for it straight from the bat because it will be huge. And uh, hopefully, they will introduce the Ultra Beasts as a new mechanic. I would love that, but we'll still have to wait and see. So, that is great news. 
Next up, uh, Burning Shadows. The Ultra Pro portfolios are uh, now available, as you see. They, uh, they have really great artwork, and if you're collecting the set, why not pick up one of those binders and put your cards, your, your new cards in them straight from the bat? It's uh, really great to collect your sets like that. And lastly, we have to talk about Shining Genesect. Yeah, Shining Genesect is uh, one of those uh, Pokemon from Shining Legends that I haven't talked about yet. It has an ability Energy Reload. Once during your turn, you may move a Grass Energy from one of your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So, pretty similar to the Shaman uh, all the way from Unleashed. That was a great card, or maybe it was Undaunted. In the Herb Gold Soul Silver era, an ability that lets you move energies is always great. So, this will um, maybe be seen uh, in a few Grass decks. Swapping around the Grass Energy is great. And then it has an attack, Giga Blaster or Gaia Blaster. Deals 50 damage and uh, you can add the damage up. For every Grass Energy attached to this Pokemon, you deal an additional 20 damage, just like Trevenant EX. So, yeah, this Genesect I'm a huge fan of, and it also has the exact same name as the uh, old school Shining, so it actually states on the card Shining Genesect, which lets me think you can run four regular Genesects and then uh, four Shining Genesects because it does not have the exact same name, but we'll have to wait and see uh, because this is not printed in English just yet. We'll have to confirm that. So this was it for another action-packed episode on my channel. If you enjoy the content, definitely uh, show your support by uh, leaving your uh, opinions and ideas in the comment section below and giving a huge destruction uh, blast on the like button because you know I always appreciate that and that gives me the support to make more and better videos for you guys. That was all for me today. Hopefully you guys have the, an awesome rest of your day and I will be seeing you guys soon enough with more TCG videos and episodes. I'm out. Peace.